after a disaster in 2406, neither the Federation nor the Republic could ignore the area formerly known as the Neutral Zone any longer. And setting up a pact to work together, both sides would create new starship designs to tame the wild frontier with the Federation birthing the Lysander class. But what do we know about this sleek and powerful design? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Lysander class, a 25th century starship design created by me to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Please note, this story is just a little fun fan fiction. Sometimes I have a story I want to tell brewing in my crazy imagination, and the only way I can get it out to you all is to create my own starship design. And so, I hope you good trinaries out there will indulge me and welcome the Lysander class into your hearts. But of course, and as always, because this is just a little bit of beta canon and fan fiction, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The area, formerly known as the Neutral Zone, was a mess. The collapse of the Romulan Star Empire had not only affected Romulan space, but all the systems that surrounded it. Before the collapse, the Neutral Zone had generally been a very lawful and orderly area of space. Alien civilizations who had been forced to reside within the Neutral Zone had initially not been very happy by the idea that two major galactic powers had imposed their will upon them. But eventually this situation would change. As per the original terms of the treaty, entry by either side into the zone constituted an act of war, basically meaning that it was hands off for both sides within that space. But in a gesture designed to appease those societies, they were allowed to traverse space into either side's territory for the purpose of trade. And with two galactic powers on their doorstep, with both eager for any and all information that could be gathered about their enemy, meant that both sides were very eager for any and all trade, making these civilizations within the neutral zone quite wealthy. That is, of course, until the collapse. Everyone thought that the former Romulan Empire would end up in a decades-long civil war. This did not happen though, and instead in short order, the free Romulan Republic would be born, an entirely new Romulan government led by those part of the dissident movement, whose values seemed to align quite nicely with those of the Federation. However, due to the desperate situation in Romulan space, and the efforts to establish a new Romulan homeworld meant that all of the available resources of the former empire were devoted to helping its own people, rather than continuing trade or helping the civilizations in the former neutral zone. Because of the synth attack in 2385, the United Federation of Planets also found itself in a precarious situation. Two-thirds of its fleet had been destroyed thanks to the attack, and although efforts were being made to almost immediately replace the missing starships, most Federation member worlds felt vulnerable. Not wanting to antagonize their former enemy, Starfleet Command and the Federation would enact a hands-off policy in regards to the former neutral zone. Everyone believed the Free Romulan Republic would not last, and that the old Star Empire would eventually reassert itself, stabilizing the area and re-establishing the terms of the old treaty. And so the Federation and Klingon Empire were both shocked when the Free Romulan Republic reached out its hand in friendship. And although the Klingon Empire would not yet believe its old foe, the much more vulnerable Federation would grasp that hand and begin several projects with their old enemy, the main of which would be the Borg Reclamation Project. And with the success for both sides of that project, so too were the seeds sown for the ever-evolving friendship 
which eventually would lead the Free Romulan Republic into joining the Federation as a valued ally. Then in early 2406, on the planet of Theresis, something would happen that would change everything. In an attempt to create a weapon they could sell to the highest bidder, the Orion Syndicate had set up a weaponry shop on that home world. And with the Theresans, who were desperate for food and medical supplies, the Orion Syndicate had indeed begun development of the Doomsday type weapon, which basically boiled down to a protomatter bomb. Protomatter, an unstable element banned by all major powers, could not be created or experimented on in all civilized areas of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. And so, for the Syndicate, the solution of using the former neutral zone seemed ideal. Sadly, however, their plan would backfire, when a containment failure would lead that entire home world to be destroyed, with an estimated casualty report of over 13 billion lives. Neither the Federation nor the Free Romulan Republic could allow the lawlessness of the former neutral zone to continue, and after several secret high-level meetings between the leadership of both sides were complete, the Algeron Safety Pact would be born. This new treaty would see both the Federation and the Free Romulan Republic work together in an effort to stabilize the area and restore the letter of the law. And so, in order to facilitate their goals, both sides would create new Starship classes, specifically designed to deal with the unusual situation in that area. And by 2407, the Lysander class would be born. Sitting at a length of 498.7 meters, the Lysander class would be designed to be operated by 312 officers and crew members. Created with the latest Borg Reclamation technology, the Lysander class would have a standard safe cruising speed of Warp Factor 9 and an emergency speed of Warp Factor 9.99 for 12-hour increments. The Lysander class would also have supercharged impulse engines that would allow her to be quite maneuverable at impulse speeds, making her a difficult target to hit. The Lysander class would also contain a new type of deflector technology, which replaced the traditional dish or emitters with what was simply called deflector projectors, originally designed for smaller vessels to achieve quantum slipstream velocities. These deflector projectors would become utilized widely during the 25th century. Tactically, the Lysander class would be equipped with the latest weaponry of the day, including phaser emitter arrays and torpedo launching systems capable of firing a variety of projectile weaponry including photon, quantum, and transphasic torpedoes. Working together side by side in teams of two, the Federation and Free Romulan Republic would be successful in their mission to restore order to the neutral zone, and by 2411, both sides were happily helping to administrate the area, with the Lysander class leading the charge for the Federation. And with the Algeron Freedom of Choice Act presented by the Free Romulan Republic in 2415, the entire area formerly known as the Neutral Zone would be given its freedom to choose to join either the Federation or the Republic or remain neutral to either side. Designed as a patrol and emergency response type vessel, the Lysander class would become a staple of peace between the United Federation of Planets and the Free Romulan Republic, cementing this special powerhouse class as an olive branch in both Federation and Romulan history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Lysander class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help this channel build a peaceful relationship with the Free Romulan Republic? Then consider becoming a channel patron, a major help that allows this channel to purchase resources and 3D models to keep it going. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long and prosper, and Jolantru.